20 seconds. 20 seconds. <laughs> Good morning, First Presbyterian Church of Cranford. It is a blessing and a pleasure to be with all of you here today. Today is Palm Sunday. How many of you are excited? You're right. Finally, we have come to the moment of uh, we have waited 40 days of uh, the 40 days of Lent, and now we have reached this moment where we're going to be walking with Jesus into Jerusalem. And for all of us here. Uh, for those of you who are watching us through Facebook and YouTube, we're going to be waving our palms, right? We're going to be going around, and the children are going to be waving the palms with us. I want to give you all a warm, warm welcome. My name is Reverend Daniel Velas, and I'm the director for Children, Youth, and Family here. And it is a blessing, and I said a privilege to be able to be worshiping with you all here today. Just remember a couple years ago that you were watching this. And from a TV or, or a laptop or anything. But now we're here together in community to be able to worship and glorify God. Isn't that great? Isn't that amazing? Are, are you guys excited? Yeah? I'm, I'm super excited okay, that we're finally, like, this is coming back together again. And with me always is the wonderful, the, the motivating Rosemary with announcements. Okay. Yeah. Good morning, everyone. I'm Worship Elder Rosemary Schultz. We welcome Deacon Betsy Kohler as our liturgist, and our music is provided by our chancel choir today, the Jubilee Bell Choir, and our organist, Bob Grube. If you're a visitor today, just so you know, they're in the pew racks, there are these red cards. If you would like to fill one out with your contact information, you'll be able to receive our weekly emails of our upcoming services. The flowers today are given by Carol Fee in honor of the congregation of FPCC, whose example of caring, giving, helping, love, and support are an inspiration. If you would like to donate to the flower fund for Easter, please complete the tear-off sheet in the bulletin and either leave it along with your check in the collection plate or bring it to the church office. I do have a few more exciting announcements. I'd like to just let you know our Holy Week services. We have Monday, Thursday, the worship will be here in the sanctuary at 7 p.m. with communion and online, and we will have Reverend Ken McCary is officiating. The Cranford Clergy Council has an ecumenical Good Friday service. It will be at noon at the Alliance Church. Our Easter sunrise service will be 7 a.m. on the front patio with weather permitting, or it will be in the narthex with Reverend Brooks Smith. Our traditional Easter service at 10 a.m. is here in the sanctuary with Reverend Brooks Smith. We will end the service with Handel's Hallelujah Chorus and invite all to join and sing at the front of the chancel steps here, and music will be provided. 
We will have an Easter egg hunt after the 10 a.m. service on the front lawn. If it rains, we'll have the Easter egg hunt here in the sanctuary. And children are invited to an egg dyeing on Friday at 10 a.m. in the gym. And I have two more very interesting. I'm so excited in the life of our church because the spirit is moving. I'm happy to announce that on April 8th, the Presbytery's Committee on Ministry, COM, approved our ministry information form, MIF. This allows us to begin the process of matching interested minister candidates with our job posting. The next step will be to evaluate candidates' resumes, conduct interviews, and move on to find our next pastor. Please keep the members of the pastor nominating committee in your prayers. We also have a new member information inquiry session that will be held on Sunday, April 24th at 11.15 a.m. immediately following worship. It'll be a time to get to know others who are new to the church as well as get a tour of the facilities. This will be a casual event if you are still discerning if you'd like to join or it's a great opportunity to meet new people. The prayers requests are taken online during the service to be read during the prayers of the people. Those here in the sanctuary can fill out a prayer request card that they are located in the, prayer, in the pews and given to an usher or place it in the collection plate before the service begins. Now let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship God with word and song as Bob leads us in the prelude and the Jubilee Bells lead us in the introit.
Good morning. Please stand and join me in the call to worship. Open the gates of righteousness, the King of Peace enters. He is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house. The Lord is God and he has given us light. Bind the festivals and with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are our God, and we will give thanks to you. You are our God. We will extol you by saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Please remain standing for the opening hymn in the bulletin. Insert the palms.
If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just. God will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all righteousness, all unrighteousness. In humility and faith, let us confess our sin to God. Please join me in our prayer of confession. On this Sunday, O oh God, we remember how quickly we change, how fickle we are, how we pledge peace and love one moment and turn our backs the next. We can see ourselves in the crowd saying, blessed is the king, one moment to crucify him the next. We speak of love, change, and justice in one breath and then continue unjust practices and talk behind each other's backs with another breath. We get annoyed easily and resort to our old habits. Forgive us, restore us, and renew us for the journey of faith so that we might become whole people who live into your vision of life, new life. In the name of Christ, who lived in the fullness of humanity and whom we follow to the cross, amen. Who is in a position to condemn? No one but Christ. And the grace of Christ is this, that it extends far beyond from where the east meets the west and from the north meets the south. Know and believe and hear the good news of the gospel, that we are forgiven in Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. Join me in praying for God to guide our proclamation of his holy word with our prayer for illumination. Guide us, O God, by your word and Holy Spirit, that in your light we may see light, in your truth find freedom, and in your will discover peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Today's Old Testament reading is from Psalm 118, verses 1 to 2 and 19 to 24. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Open to me the gates of righteousness, that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and have become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The second reading is found in the Gospel of Luke, chapters 19, verses 28 to 40. After he had said this, he went on ahead going up to Jerusalem. When he had come to near Bethpage and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you. And as you enter, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say this, the Lord needs it. 
So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? They said, the Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks onto the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise and praise God joyfully with a loud voice with all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered them, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would Shout out the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We're going to have the children's message now. I'm going to ask all the children to come on down. Come on down, come on down, come on down. We know you're here. <laughs> we, we saw you. Come on down. Yeah, come on all the way up here. That was a lot of fun walking around, right? We, we normally don't get to do that at church, right? Where we're like just waving branches, trying not to poke people in the eye, right? You guys okay? Yeah? No one got hurt or anything like that? Good, perfect. It was organized chaos, just like, how, like we like, like it, right? So in this bag... I have something. Do you know what it is? No, okay. Do you want to know what it is? Okay. So we're going to play, <laughs> we're going to play a guessing game, all right? So you're going to put your hand in here without looking, and you're going to tell me what is inside. Okay? All right. Good? All right, Teddy. Ready? Put your hand in there. He doesn't even want to put his hand in there. Okay, ooh. All right, let's see over here. Put your hand in there without looking. All the way in. Something furry. Something furry, okay. Oh, all right, put your hand in there. Don't look, don't look. It's something furry. It's something furry, oh. Okay, did it move? Yeah. No, okay, that's good. It's not supposed to move. <laughs> all right, do you want to put it in? Okay, it might be an alley in it. Wait, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right. All right. You want to try as well? All right. Yeah. It's a cat. Okay. All right. That would be kind of mean of me if I put a... All right. What do you think? You, it has physical form, you guess. Wow, that was, you, you did like a full scientific review of this. Okay, all right. So what do you think it is? You said? A what? An owl. An owl, okay. Uh, an owl, okay. What do you think it is? A cat. A cat, okay. What do you think it is? A cat, okay. Teddy, what do you think it is? Hmm, stuff animal? Okay. And she got really nervous about it. Okay, ready? All right. Elsa, drum roll, please. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Elsa. All right. <laughs> All right. It is, it is Teddy with a lion mane, right? Now, yeah, yeah, yeah. You were right. So, expecting the unexpected, none of you knew what was in here, right? However, it's just, it's just a teddy bear with a mane. Now, in the same way, when Jesus was approaching Jerusalem, many were expecting a really strong, powerful king. And what do you think a king is? What's a king? How does a king look like? He has a crown. He has a crown, right? Yeah? I mean, somebody who rules because he's the leader of 
He has fancy clothes and everything. But this Jesus was proclaimed king, and he was riding a donkey. You guys know that, that Shrek movie? It was like, donkey, right? Yeah. He was riding a donkey. Do kings normally ride donkeys? No. Well, yeah, they ride like really strong stallions, really strong horses. But the reason why Jesus was riding a donkey was because he was proclaiming peace. Okay? And today we're going to be learning about how we can proclaim peace and how we are agents of peace, okay? So we're going to go back to our, our, our seats, okay, with our moms and dads, and we're going to listen to the sermon, all right? Good? We're ready? All right, come on down. Round of applause for the kids. They were amazing today, like always. They are great. I love it. Teddy, if you could. Put Teddy, let's put Teddy over here. Here you go. You can hold Teddy. All right, good. All right. Could you please join me in prayer? Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable to you. For you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Holy Week is here. It is upon us. I have learned to love Holy Week and come to understand the importance of it. As a youth... As a kid, when I was a kid, I used to hate Holy Week. I know, the reverend saying he hated Holy Week. No, but sincerely, just think of, view it from my eyes. All of my friends going to the beach, to the mall, to the movies, going to parties because they were free. They were free at last. However, this, this poor pastor's kid had to wake up. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday to go to church every single day like it was school against my will. And on Sunday, after I was tortured, I had to wake up at 5.30 in the morning for two services. Y'all are laughing. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> no, I've come to, I've, I've had therapy. Uh, no, no, uh, no it's, it's, it's looking back, though, re and reflecting upon it. And, and now that I am an adult, I reflect and I see the importance of Holy Week. Now, as kids, as we, when we were kids, we love Christmas, which is, which is the flip side of of. Holy Week. We love Christmas. We, there is this, and we prefer it. There's, it's, it's full of wonder. There's lights. There's presents. There's music. There's this warmth, and, and there's this magic in the air. However, Holy Week is just, it's, it's missing a couple things. When you ask people, what do you, which one do you prefer? Do you prefer Christmas or Holy Week? Normally, people would say, well, Christmas. But coming to understand that we cannot have Christmas without Holy Week. And we can't have Holy Week without Christmas. It comes both in the same boat. Holy Week, with Christmas, we see in, in Holy Week the fulfillment of everything. Everything that was promised to us in Christmas. It's like we get to open our gifts finally. Promises that we heard in our Christmas services. Promises that were made to a scared mother. And you will have a son. And you will name him Jesus. He will be great and he will, become, he will be called the son of the most high. And the Lord will give him the throne of his ancestor David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom, there will be no end. At Christmas, we see shepherds, wise men, and angels worshiping this king being born. But in Holy Week, we walk with this king to Jerusalem, 
where he is going to be unjustly killed. As we reflect on today's passage, I would like to talk on the theme of identity. It is extremely important for us to contemplate on our Christian identity. And Lent and Holy Week allows us to reflect and ask ourselves, why am I a Christian? What does it mean to be a Christian in this time, in this place, in this century? Who am I in the midst of my friends, my family, my community, and the strangers that come into my vicinity? These questions become more and more difficult as we grow up and the world changes. You know, the constant change that we see in our culture, social media, politics, and ethics. It is difficult to know who you are in a world that is constantly changing. And this theme is something, it's, it's a topic that mo a lot of pastors love to touch upon with their congregants. In fact, there was a pastor at one point who would, was on this sermon series of identity. And in the past, you know, a long time ago, Mindy, there used to be a saying, WWJD. Do you know what that stands for? It, it, yeah, <laughs> I mean, it means, what would Jesus do? Right? I mean, they gave me, the, gave me the thumbs up. Good. What would Jesus do? And this pastor would preach on it and preach on it and preach on it. And the congregation knew it by heart. What would Jesus do? One day, this pastor was walking in the parking lot, and he lost $100 from his pocket. You're like, oh, my God, that's like milk money. That's like gas money, especially gas money, especially during this time. I can't believe it. Don't tell my wife. And he kept, and he searched for it, and he searched for it in the parking lot, and he could not find it. And a couple of months later, a congregant came to him and said, God blessed me. I found $100 in the parking lot. And the pastor said, oh, really? Oh, so what, what, what were you thinking of doing? He said, well, your sermons came to mind immediately. What would Jesus do? What would Jesus do, right? What would Jesus do? He said, what, what did you do? He said, I went to the store and made it into wine. Now... <laughs> That, did you, did you get the joke? It was a joke. Okay, okay, good, good. I love doing that because everyone is expecting something really, like, passionate, very, no, it's a joke. Jesus understood who he was when those around him were placing different identities on him. And we can learn from Jesus what does it mean to be a Christian. The Pharisees viewed Jesus as a blasphemer, a dis someone who was disrupting the peace constantly. Jesus' disciples rightfully welcomed him as king that brings peace in the name of the Lord. Their words echo the similar acclamation of angels at the birth of Jesus, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. But they don't understand the severity of proclaiming Jesus as king. What does it mean to be king in, the, in our scriptures, in, in, in the Bible? Being king meant to be the ruler, or the monarch of the country, the realm around them. But, however, the king was a ruler of all. They had to understand that God is king. God is first. And this, the responsibility of the king was to establish the will of God. Now, kings would have prophets. And their responsibility, if they were good prophets, were to say, follow the commandments. Follow, you know, the will of God. Hey, uh, make, make sure that you don't steal or, or kill unjustly. If they were bad prophets, however, they would be yes people. Yes, king, whatever you like. Yes, king, whatever you need. Yes, king. 
However, when we reflect on Jesus, the reason why the Pharisees did not like him, the reason why the Pharisees would shun him away was because he did not want to surround himself with yes people. He knew his identity. Now, Jesus is the king of peace. And this peace is between us and God because of our transgressions. God's will for us is to have peace. Jesus, being the unexpected king, not, is, is not going to change the political landscape like his disciples wanted. But he is a king that is going to die for change. This king is going to bring peace between God and humanity by being a sacrifice. It is this sacrifice that we obtain our identity. Now, while I was reflecting and writing this sermon, uh, I love to see movies. And one of my favorite movies is called The Knight's Tale. A Knight's Tale. How many of you have seen it? Any of you? I love that movie. It's, one, it's my favorite. It's including jousting and, and just chivalry and, and becoming something that you feel that you are inside, but you, have, you can't because society deems you that you cannot be. And we have this, this person called William. And William is born in a, pover, in, in a poor society, basically. And he wants to be a knight. There's nothing more that William wants to be than to be a knight. A knight in shiny armor to be able to fight for the king. However, he can't do it. In fact, one of the, in, one, in one of the scenes, he's portrayed in being in his father's uh, uh, lap, uh, father's shoulder, and the knights are passing by. And he says, Father, I want, I want to be a knight. And, the, and there's a person who's in jail and says and starts laughing at him. He's like, you have better chances at changing the stars than to become a knight. And there, in the transition of the movie, William becomes a knight through falsehood. It's not his real identity. He has to hide his name. He has to hide his identity. He has to hide who he is. And he fights and becomes massively popular. And... It isn't until a moment where he is caught by the rival knight, right, the, the dark knight, right? And he is placed. I don't know what these are called they're, they're, when you go like this. Stockade, thank you. He's placed there. And the people who loved him started throwing eggs and started throwing rotten tomatoes at him and all these different things. And it wasn't until a, 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 the king came and stopped the whole crowd. And he said, I have searched. And this person's knightlyhood comes from an ancient family. And my word is not to be contended with. And he comes and he removes him from the stockade and he knights him. And then he, William goes, and he goes and he wins the tournament. He wins the hand of the maiden and all these different things. And it's a really great movie. I welcome you to, to look for it. It's, a, it's an amazing movie. In the same way for us, many times when we are outside in the world, we're placed with different identities. And sometimes identities that we don't want. Sometimes identities that we don't call for. Sometimes the, view, the world views us in a different light. However, when you look at yourself in the mirror, what do you see? Many times when we look ourselves in the mirror, we start defining ourselves by our profession. Well, I'm a banker, or I'm, I'm a school teacher. Or sometimes when we look ourselves in the mirror, we see ourselves as a mother or a father, an uncle. Sometimes when we look ourselves in the mirror, we start seeing the names that they used to call us in high school. Fatty, loser, four eyes. And we have all these identities that have been placed upon us. However, God calls you by a different identity. And it is through Jesus Christ that we receive this identity. 
And hear what the Apostle Paul has to say about this. So, from now on, we are regarded no longer in a worldly point of view. Though we were once regarded Christ in this way, we do not so we do not do so any longer. Therefore, and this is the words that I want you to hear, if anyone is in Christ, like you and I are in Christ, they are a new creation. The old has gone. The new is here. All of this is from Christ, from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message, this message, of reconciliation. So today, when you go out and you see yourself in the mirror when you're backing up in your car, or you finally reach your house and you're changing your clothes, and you see yourself in your reflection, remember that through this unexpected king, we have received a new identity. And your old self the one that you keep arguing with. Why, why do I get angry so much? Why, why do I still have this problem? Why do I keep either lying or why do I keep cheating or why do I keep doing all these different things around me? I'm not that person anymore. You are a different person in Christ. You are a new person creation in Christ. Now, when we enter into the kingdom, <laughs> now when we enter into the kingdom, we enter with Christ as a new creation because God has extended to us the ministry of reconciliation. This is good news. This is great news. And I invite you that when you go to your house, Say that to yourself. Proclaim that to yourself. Reflect upon it. You are a new creation in Christ. Would you please pray with me? Father, we thank you for these moments where we are able to give thanks. And God, we ask that in these moments you bestow upon us and you cement in us the knowledge that we are a new creation, that we proclaim a ministry of reconciliation between one another because we have learned what it means to be reconciled through the blood of the Lamb. God, we thank you for this gift. And we say, in the words in these hymns, come the long expected Jesus into our hearts. Amen. Could you please stand and let us sing together hymn one, come the long expected Jesus.
be seated. Good morning. We lift up prayers of our church family and friends, those printed in the bulletin and those in the Lenten basket. Prayers for a successful kidney transplant for Anne Marie. Continued prayers for Uncle Sonny. Prayers for the people of Ukraine. Please pray for all those in need. Prayers for Marilyn as she heads to rehab. Continued prayers of healing for Amy Arrow, Jeff Nichols, and Sharon Aitkins. Also, prayers of healing for Tina. Congratulations to Emily and Nick Fuentes on the birth of their daughter, Charlotte. Lord, hear our prayers. God, we know that you listen to and you hear all of our prayers those that we have spoken out out loud and those that are still in our hearts and our minds. And God, those are the prayers that we are too afraid to utter, too afraid for those words to enter our lips. But God, when we don't know the words to pray, we give thanks to you that your son has given us and instructed us with these words of prayer saying, our Father who are in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please join me in the affirmation of faith that is printed in your bulletin. It says, we trust in Jesus Christ, fully human, fully God. Jesus proclaimed the reign of God, preaching good news to the poor and release to the captives, teaching by word and deed and blessing the children, healing the sick and binding up the brokenhearted, eating with the outcasts, forgiving sinners, and calling all to repent and believe the gospel unjustly condemned for blasphemy and sedation. Jesus was crucified, suffering the depths of human pain and giving his life for the sins of the world. God raised this Jesus from the dead, vindicating his sinfulness, breaking the power of sin and evil, delivering us from death to life eternal. Amen. The treasures and everything that we have belongs to our king. And we have been blessed. And in this, in this moment, in the same way that God has blessed us, we have been given the opportunity and the ministry of blessing one another. In the same way, when we come and you see these kids waving palms and having a Sunday school and being able to join VBS or, or, or youth fellowship or when we go out into the, to the community to serve in the soup kitchen, all of these come from your gifts, from your blessings. And in the same way that we have received from God, let us also give. And for those who are at home, there is in the, in the webpage a little button for, to donate or to give. And for us, the donations can be collected at the end of in the North X. Let us give to God in the same way we have received.
God, we thank you for all these gifts that you have bestowed upon us. And God, we ask that these gifts, may we be able to use them to further your kingdom, to be able to shed light in their, the people's identity outside of these four walls, that they may be able to understand and hear the good news of the gospel that is in you, God. We give you thanks. In your name we pray. Amen. Would you please join me in hymn 252, O Lord, you are my God and King, verses 1 and 2. As you leave this place, sing Hosanna, because the king has entered into the kingdom. And we have opened our gates, the gates of our hearts, and he has conquered our identities of fear, of prejudices, of those things that we want to eliminate. Our king is king, not only of the world, but of our hearts and of our identities. We have been received in the mercies of God. Thanks be to God for always. Amen. And now, by the grace of God, 
the love of Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us all forever and ever. Amen. Go out to peace to serve the Lord.